Andrew Neil brilliantly exposes Sturgeon's COVID vaccine failure can't handle the truth. Andrew Neil has shut down an outrageous defense of the SNP's vaccine rollout in a brilliant exchange on social media. Attacking the SNP for failing to reach its target of 1 million vaccinations by the end of the month, Mr Neil hit out at the SNP for initially criticizing the UK government for excluding itself from the EU's vaccine procurement plan. As of February 2, the SNP reported they had completed 610,778 vaccinations. In contrast, there have been 8,362,868 in England. Highlighting the failure of the SNP in contrast to England, Mr Neil quipped the party may want to revise its comments regarding the UK's vaccine strategy. In a brutal put-down, he said, as of yesterday there have been 611,000 vaccinations in Scotland, not quite the one metre by end of January promised by local health minister G. Ann Freeman. The SNP was furious when UK refused to join EU vaccine procurement. Perhaps it's still keen to emulate EU rollout pace. One user was quick to attack the former BBC man for attempting to stir up criticism. He said, so this will be your mo going forward. SH asterisk T stirring as opposed to documenting the hows and whys as a journalist question mark in response, Mr. Neil said. You can't handle the truth, can you question mark not only has Scotland's vaccine rollout struggled, but on January the 31st, just 9,628 vaccinations were recorded, the lowest daily number reported. Last year, the UK made the decision not to join the EU's procurement strategy for vaccinations. This has allowed the UK to be more agile in signing vaccine deals and allows Westminster to determine its own vaccination programme. Although EU member states had the ability to opt out, states eventually allowed the Commission to take the lead in buying vaccines, resulting in the current fiasco on the continent. At the time of the UK government's decision, the SNP's shadow Brexit secretary, Dr Philippa Whitford, said, at a time when the UK should be accelerating efforts to work with our EU partners towards finding a vaccine, it is concerning that the UK government has instead rejected the opportunity to take part in yet another EU-wide programme. The UK government's short-sighted and increasingly isolationist approach does nothing but hinder the ability to tackle the virus effectively.